All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in live. Uh, my name is Surit, and I am the country representative for Curtin University. Curtin University is a university based out of Perth, which is in Western Australia. And today we are tying up with professional education consultancy um, to do a live video session for you guys to talk about um, the courses available, university, a little bit about Perth, and a lot more about what's happening, how can we help um, uh, you in terms of understanding what the current situation is uh, and what are the next steps for you to do. We'll also, we can also talk about how to go ahead and make this time more productive and more usable for you guys so that you don't just stay idle at your homes. Just uh, tune in, we'll be here live for the next hour or about 50 minutes and we'll talk about everything. So as I said, my name is Surit Bhatrai. I am the country representative for Curtin University based out of um, Perth, Western Australia. Essentially, Curtin University is a uh, public university where we, we are based out of three locations within Australia. So within Australia, we are based out of um, Perth City, uh, Bentley, uh, which is our Bentley, another campus is our Bentley campus, and the third campus is our regional campus, which is our Calgary campus. So we have more than 200 different courses with about 56,000 students studying with us at the university, um, out of which about 25% are international students from 150 different countries. So we have a very good population of both local as well as international students. So tomorrow when you want to go there and study, you will not feel like you're left out. You will not feel like you've never, um, you were never given an access to the local scenario. But having said that, you'd also never feel like you're left, uh, you're just um, one international student amongst hundreds of local students. You'll find your international buddies there as well. Um, thanks to the people, good people at Professional Education Consultancy. Today I'm going live with them um, to just talk about all the ideas, all the issues that's been happening. Um, thank you so much, uh, Professional Education team, for letting me do this and making sure that our voice is heard. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to write your questions down on the comments so that I can go ahead and read them out and give you any answers or should there be any more queries that I can help resolve, I'd be more than happy to do that. In the current scenario, when all of us are bound, this is the 42nd day in the poll uh, where we have lockdown. So if you are one of those uh, people who've been facing lockdown, I hope you've been keeping yourself safe. I hope you've been keeping yourselves occupied because it's pretty easy to be bored and it's pretty easy to be um, you know, in a stagnant place mentally. So you need to keep yourselves occupied. You need to do something that's gonna jog your you know, mental um, capacity a little bit. So make sure that you do that. Um, they have, uh, professional education has been very um, helpful in bringing sessions like these every week and making sure that you guys have something to hear for from everyone every week. So just keep on getting yourselves occupied and make sure that you have some um, or something to look forward to by the end of uh, this lockdown. Um, as I was saying Curtin, about Curtin University, so Curtin University is not just based out of Australia. We are actually a global university. We have campuses based in Malaysia, Singapore, Mauritius, and Dubai besides the Australia campus. So any student who does not want to go directly to Australia can or does not meet the requirements to go to Australia directly can um, choose or opt to go in any of our other partner campuses. You can do one semester in Dubai or one semester in Malaysia, Mauritius, Singapore, and then go into Australia. That's still OK. Um, so you just need to find out the courses that are available and if um, everything makes sense, like in terms of your visa and everything. So uh, once you have that, you can definitely go ahead and do your courses in different um, in um, other different countries as well as Australia. And it is always a good thing for you because it's it's going to put that exposure part into play. Um, yeah, absolutely. So um, I will share some very popular programs with, uh, at Curtin University uh, amongst Nepalese students. So we are essentially um, very popular amongst both undergraduate as well as postgraduate market. Uh, one of our most popular that I think for Nepalese market that I've seen is our business program, health sciences program and science and engineering program. Uh, but besides that, I'll also talk about a few other uh, programs that I think could be good if you are looking at that extra opportunity. 
currently, if you uh, have been following the news and if you've been following the updates with location, uh, lo different locations in Australia, you'll find that many different uh, places were named regional um, in uh, regional campuses or many, many different locations were named as regional from cities. Now, the differences between a regional um, city and a regular city is that a regular city will have all the exposure, all the experience, all the big buildings, saw buildings and everything. But um, the regional, uh, regional status means that there's not enough population and they still have an opportunity to grow. And the government gives subsidy when you are w w staying there or studying there. The, the subsidy can be anything. So currently the subsidy is that A, you get extra one extra year of post-study work, right? So tomorrow when you are um, uh, studying at Perth, instead of just two years, you will be getting a three years of post-study work, right? You can very easily check this amongst the Western Australian government sites, or you can find this on Study Perth website as well. So you can get that extra year of post-study work, right? Instead of just two years after your bachelor's or master's, which is that one extra year means one extra year worth of experience, one extra year worth of validating your education, which is going to help you in the future. Um, also, it just means one extra year of savings for you. So it's, it's, it's always a good thing to get that into your portfolio. Till November, I think mid of November last year, Perth was the fifth largest city in Australia, and now it's been changed into one of the regional areas. Now, the beauty is, again, as I said, is that we get that regional area benefits for our students. So when you go there, not only are you getting a one extra year of post-study work, right, but you're also getting some other facilities, like you're getting the whole idea of um, better uh, facilities in terms of infrastructure, growing community, and you can be a part of that growing community when it grows and as it grows. Um, not just that, um, in terms of our courses, let's just quickly jump into our courses. Um, one of our favorite courses for Nepalese students from health sciences department is from an undergraduate level, it's um, our bachelors of nursing. Both our bachelors as well as our masters of nursing is very, very famous uh, because one, we are the second oldest nursing school in entire of Australia. So we have very good credibility when it comes to graduating nurses and all of our graduating nurses can graduate with um, uh, with a registration in their hands. So they can apply for registration as soon as they graduate. So that's one of the good things that you can get. You don't need to do extra courses. You don't need to do extra classes. You can just immediately register yourself. Um, both for undergraduate as well as for postgraduate. We also have amazing programs like lab technology, um, molecular medicine. Uh, we also have a little bit of, um, uh, sorry, uh, psychology, pharmacy. Our pharmacy lab is one of the best labs that I've seen so far. Um, and we have so many different facilities available for our students that they can use. They don't normally have to go for a regular um, option. Um, so uh, just uh, besides that, we also have different other courses like in our postgraduate courses, we have our public health, Masters of Public Health, which is uh, ranked number six in Australia, if I'm not wrong, and 40 something in throughout the world. So our ranking for Masters of Public Health is pretty high. We also have our Masters of Health Administration with a clinical leadership specialization. So anyone who's from a health science background and does not want to go for public health or cannot meet the requirements for public health, that could be one of the things that you could do. Um, so we have a few questions. I'm just going to attend that, and then I'm going to continue going on about the university. So could you please elaborate PSW for our viewers and its advantages? Um, so I think the best way to uh, identify this, it would be to go through the Western, U Western, Australia's, uh, Western, Union, Western Australia government's website, or you can even go to Study Perth's website to get more details about it. But in a gist, what it means is, when you study, according to the Australian government and according to the ESOS, uh, ESOS Act, um, when a student studies three, uh, three years or four years of bachelor's degree or two years of master's by coursework degree, every student in Australia is eligible for two years of post-study work, right? Now, PSW, as it's called. PSW is that point, that chance for you to use your degree that you've just earned and make, um, you know, get more experience. So you've already learned the degree from Australia. Now work with an Australian company for the next two years and grab that experience. So when you come back home, when you come back to your home country, you come back with work experience as well. You don't just come back with um, a theoretical experience. Now it's your choice. If a student says, I don't want to take it, it's your choice. You don't have to necessarily take it, but you have, you are given with that um, option. Now with the, 
with uh, with the option of regional there are two kinds of regional there is one where you would get one year extra of PSW. So if you study, like if you study the same degree in any of other cities like Sydney, Melbourne, you will only get two years of post-study work, right? But if you study the same thing in Perth, in our Perth campus, you will get three years of post-study work, right? Which means one extra year of post-study work, right? Another thing is if you're studying with our mining, if you're studying mining with us and studying in our campus in Calgary Boulder, which is a far regional campus than even Perth. It's 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 a really regional campus. Instead of just two years, you will be getting a four years of post-study work right? So you can get the details of that, as I said, in Western Australian governments' websites or through different study Perth's website or through migration agents and your education agents. So you can talk to people like professional education guys and they'll be able to more uh, clearly elaborate on that. But yeah, essentially you will be getting more out of just your uh, normal education. Also, uh, Santosh Kanalji uh, says, uh, hello, Surit. Hello, good afternoon, Surit. Uh, can you please explain about scholarship program? Yes, absolutely. So depending on the course that you are going for, we have a couple of scholarship options available. If you have, the first one is called our alumni and family scholarship. So if you have any of your siblings or parents who have studied in Curtin University or who are studying in Curtin University, you will be eligible for up to $10,000 of scholarship, which is called a um, specific, um, uh, which is called your alumni and family scholarship. Now that goes up to um up to the area of 20 25% uh, on the first year which is about $10,000 on your first year uh we also have another scholarship which is called a merit scholarship merit scholarship is as the name suggests um merit scholarship is for any student who's going there and who has a good education background from here if you are going for a master's degree essentially you will be looking for uh, anything about 60 to 65% in your bachelor's degree. If you're going for a bachelor's degree, then you'll need anything about 80% um, and above or 3.5 GPA and above uh, in order to qualify for that scholarship. So the merit scholarship, the same scholarship that I'm talking about, is 25% on your first year's tuition fee. It also comes down to the same 10,000 up to $10,000 on your first year's tuition fee. So it is beautiful. You should definitely apply for that. We also have something called an English language scholarship. Now, English language scholarship is pretty interesting. English language scholarship is um, the scholarship that you can apply for. Um, we have every time a student is not eligible for, say, you'll need an IELTS of 6.5 overall with each band of six, but you only end up getting an overall of six with each band of six. So the beauty is you can definitely apply um, for that 10 weeks or five, two weeks English language course. The 10 weeks or the two weeks English language course with Curtin University we provide is free of cost. So we provide that free of cost and we make sure that the students can enjoy um, that access with us. So that's up to, that, that goes up to a huge amount. Um, but yeah, essentially the student gets that for free. Another scholarship that a lot of students do not know at this point is something called a Destination Australia Scholarship. Now, sorry, Destination Australia Scholarship is the Australian government scholarship that they are providing currently. And the Destination Australia, as per the Destination Australia Scholarship, um, if you study in our regional campus, that is in our Calgary campus, two of our courses are eligible for this scholarship, Masters of Engineering Science Mining and Masters of Engineering Science Metallurgy. If any student studies amongst these of the courses, um, then they will be eligible for up to, uh, f sorry, for a $15,000 per year scholarship. Now, again, remember that your $15,000 will be uh, $15,000 per year. So it goes on for your second year as well, for your master's degree. Since it's a master's degree, it's only going to be there for two years. So first year, $15,000, second year, $15,000. So you get a, a very good amount. This is given by Australian government. You have to have 75% in your four years bachelor's degree if you want to apply for this scholarship. And your uh, degree has to um, be closely related to the master's degree that you're going to go. So that's another scholarship that you can apply for. So yeah, we have currently these many scholarships available. Um, we've seen a lot of inquiries for agricultural studies in Curtin. Can you send some spares, shed some light on this program? Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, currently, we have a very interesting program. We have two um, uh, very interesting program. One is um, 
so we have a climate emergency program which is a very good su subject for anyone uh, who is an environmental science or climatology uh, specific student and if anyone wants to go for an environmental science major then that could be uh, something very interesting for our students we also have something called um, the masters of science and dry land agriculture system so it is something pretty interesting for someone who's graduated out of an agriculture uh, bachelor's in agriculture or even bachelor's of environmental science to be honest if they have good agriculture background and if they have worked in any of the agricultural sectors then it makes sense and it is a plus point for them. I would always recommend them to apply for this. Again, all of our master's degree are very, very highly regarded. And most of our students that do our master's degree with us may are normally uh, very happy with our turnaround and with uh, with our graduation. Um, so what does the virtual classroom mean and how will the virtual classroom time do with the student in different time zones? Can you please explain? So normally currently, because all of the universities and all of the colleges, even our English language courses that we upload, that we provide for free for our Nepalese students um, uh, is now moved to virtual. Now virtual classroom essentially means you would be uh, taking different classes depending on the platform. Um, the students will get an access uh, to the platform to use that and they would be able to give, just like how you are getting an access to this live counseling session they would get um, an access to uh, a live uh, classroom link as well the student can uh, stay at their home just have to have a decent internet speed and a laptop or any of the devices that they want to use for their classes and they can do um the details they can use the details um and they can start the classes now essentially you will get full uh, you will have to provide good attendance as well if the classrooms are virtual you will have to provide good attendance you will have to make sure that you are uh, available just because it's an online class you cannot just turn off your video and then uh, do something else um that's not uh, not essentially good for you and it's not always the right thing to do as well um, you will also have to think about uh, different things like uh, uh, how to uh, talk to the teachers, possibly if it's a different platform, according to different platforms, normally you might have to unmute yourself or ask a question on chat or however it is. It is going to be a little different and it's going to, it might be a little difficult to start with, but this is going to be a new normal. Um, and this is something that we have to work because the current scenario demands that we do um, something like this. Um, so in, in the virtual classroom, we make sure that our students um, have an access to the teachers, just like the regular classrooms. And we also make sure that the students do not miss out on any questions. If they have any questions that they need to ask, and if they're feeling really, you know, if they're feeling shy or if they're feeling like, oh, should I ask this question? Should I not? They don't have to worry about this. We will make sure um, that uh, they uh, attend the class. Um, another one, let me just quickly see. Right, so we have, if someone missed their online classes, will they join another one? Um, so if they miss their online classes, they, I, again, I would recommend not to do that because if you've already signed up for online classes, it is going to be the same as your regular classes. So your attendance matters really, really high. You have to make sure that your attendance is there. You cannot miss out on the attendances because the more you do, the your attendance scheme does not go well and then it is going to be a huge hamper for you. Um, and you will not have enough credits to uh, graduate from that specific unit. So I would not recommend doing that. But yes, essentially, if you do that, um, they will be able, They if there is a similar class going on or if the professor does decides to repeat that course, they might be able to, or if there is a recorded version of the class that the professor provides, then you might be able to. But again, as I said, I would recommend not to do that. For any student who's looking to study, it's your right and it's your duty to complete the classes within the given time frame. Vivek Chapa guy says, what about PhD in civil engineering? I uh, okay what about phd in civil engineering scholarship provision english language requirements and others okay uh Bibigji, if you want to figure out about our phd requirements now there are certain procedures you need to follow for our phd um the first one being that you have to come write a two page up to two page um proposal letter um and you need to have your cv ready once you do that, you can go to our website on our website go to um the hdr section where you can um, apply for uh, when you can apply uh, for your PhD. So in that essential section, what you'll find is A, the uh, sample uh, document for your, or the sample of um, how to write a uh, proposal is also available. And they also have a CV sample there, or at least a guideline to write a CV. So you can definitely check that out. Um, sorry, not a sample, but a guideline to write your 
proposal and a guideline to write your CV. So you can find both of that there. Use that and make sure that you have your CV and proposal um, accordingly. Now, if you go to that uh, HDR section and if you search for civil engineering, you'll find all the professors and supervisors that normally handle the course, that exact course that you're looking for. If you're looking for an essential specialization within even civil engineering, um, you can just search using that and you'll find all the professors, all the supervisors with their email addresses and names. Choose the ones that you think uh, think uh, matches the best to your interest. Send them your proposal with all the details and they will get back to you when they do. And when they approve of that, then you can talk about the scholarship. You can talk about any any uh, assistantship that uh, they can provide all of these. And then you can talk to the professor according to the professor, uh, according to how they go ahead and give more details so you can get that. Um, essentially, uh, IELTS requirement is a 6.5 overall with each band of six for most of the courses. It might differ from some courses, but essentially that is the requirement. You can also contact the uh, guys here at Professional Education and they'll be more than happy to help you out with your application as well. Raju Singh asks, for masters in dryland agriculture, is it necessary that the students would need to have a BSc in agriculture or NA science? Uh, um, so for a master's in dryland agriculture, it is preferable if a student is from an agricultural background, if the student has a BSc in agriculture. But if the student does not have a BSc in agriculture, if the student has a BSc in environmental science or soil science or something related like a botany science, but they have worked in a um, uh, agricultural sector that is going to help them get that uh, extra exposure and that's going to help them make the you know, make their way into the degree. Any science, any any student from a uh, non-related uh, degree, uh, non-related, uh, sorry, bachelor's degree, with not even an experience, will will not be able to get into the degree, and it'll be hard. It'll be completely hard for that student to get into that degree and try to understand the logic, try to understand the concepts. It will be entirely different for them. So we just make sure that the student have very good um, background for them to apply. IELTS requirement would be an overall of 6.5 with each band of 6.0. Work experience necessarily is not required, but you have it. It's it's always a plus thing. Make sure that you use that. Uh, so we have another question. Any financial package for international students provided by Curtin University? So as I said, we do have a couple of scholarships available, our merit scholarships, family and alumni scholarships, our English language scholarships, and our destination Australia scholarships. So these are the current four scholarships that we have that we promote to our students. Uh, first, international student facing hard, hardship uh, period. Uh, so during the hardship period, we are providing, we have um, we have uh, worked with different government sectors and we are coming up with different uh, projects to help them. But currently from Curtin University directly, we are providing up to $1,500 of financial. Um, uh, so it is mostly for accommodation. So anyone who's having issues with accommodation, we normally provide that housing scholarship. So the, all the student needs to do is contact us and we are contacting most of our students. So uh, we will possibly do that uh, by the end of this week as well. So if any student is there who's listening to this and who feels like they should um, apply for uh, this scholarship, then please contact the university and then you'll be able to find more about that um, immediately. Uh, Roshan Kanalji, which <coughs> program do you refer <coughs> to those who have completed an MBA in Nepal? Now, Roshanji, that's a very generic uh, information that I will not be able to help you much with. But what I do can say is if you've done a MBA already in Nepal, it it is going to be very difficult because um, you've already done an MBA. So there's only so much. So th there's got to be a very good reason why you want to do another course. MBA essentially is like a top up degree. You've already done a top up degree. So you could either go for a master's by research a master's uh, or a PhD course if you've done if you have publications um, if not you want to go for a master's by coursework I would suggest understanding what your profile looks like if you are from a sales and marketing background maybe you'd want to do a marketing degree if you are from a logistics and supply chain background you want to do something like that but since you've already done an MBA uh, we would want to check that file uh, maybe show it to the guys here at professional and they'll be able to help you I'm not saying it won't be um, it won't be accepted it will be accepted but it has to be a very convincing reason Ayushraj Pauriel <coughs> sorry Ayushraj Pauriel uh, she asks scholarships available for master's program in engineering um, we have a lot of uh, one of the good things is uh, Curtin University is amongst the university amongst the Australian Technical University Association. Um, and so our engineering courses are pretty famous. 
for our masters of engineering program we have uh, a 25 percent merit scholarship available so if you have seven uh, sorry 60 to 65 percent minimum in your four years engineering degree uh when you did your bachelor's degree then when you apply for your master's degree you will get a 25 percent scholarship on your first year that is one of the scholarships that we have we have our masters of professional engineering going all the way from civil engineering uh, and we have mechanical engineering uh, we also have software engineering we have chemical engineering we have petroleum engineering uh, mining uh, sorry petroleum engineering and all, all of these engineering we have about seven specializations that we have so you can choose any one of them if anything makes sense uh, if any of the courses looks like something that you would be interested in you should definitely apply um, um so i am trying to see different questions if i've missed any questions uh sorry i, I missed out this question from rajesh G. is australia suited for masters in science well uh, depends on what kind of course that you're looking for again australia has a lot of universities australia has about 43 universities um uh, we are the largest university in western australia we are ranked top one percent in the whole world our qs ranking as of 2020 is 230 in the whole world as of 2019 our civil engineering our uh, earth sciences courses our a few a few fair bit of humanities courses were within top 100 courses of the world so depending on what kind of course you're looking for depending on what kind of subjects you're looking for and uh with uh, different kinds of like specializations with professors you should definitely look into the course like science specific is a very broad subject we have anywhere from um engineering to uh, normally health sciences to earth sciences whichever it is that you're looking for i would say yes it is a good option i've seen many i actually i am a Trivial university product and i've seen a lot of um professors and uh, teachers from uh, Truman University applied to Australia for a PhD. They have done a very good job by studying PhD there and they've come back with uh, great opportunities here in Nepal as well. Uh, with much focus on local agriculture during pandemic, I believe there would be a lot of scope in it, isn't it? Um, for it, isn't it? Uh, the degree would be a boon for students. Yes, absolutely. Agriculture has always been a very strong subject in Nepal um, and people, uh, do not uh, uh, people do not normally uh, push uh, for that subject because we've always been one of those uh, South Asian cultures where we think that there are a specific set of subjects that we need to study. But what we don't understand is even today when you are applying for an agriculture bachelor's of science in agriculture in Rampur campus, you have to go through a very tedious exam and you have to crack that exam in order to get through. Most of the students don't know this. Most of the students don't know how hard it is to go there because um, the student has to get that exam cracked. And it is a very hard exam. It is a very tough exam. And for someone to study an agricultural science from Rampur campus or some other campuses um, for that name is very hard. And imagine coming that uh, from students and coming here in, in back to Nepal and working and uh, you know doing some after gra their graduation from the undergraduate going abroad doing the postgraduate coming back to nepal and using that degree and showing the people that hey this is the new form of uh, technology that we can use in agriculture agro business um agro technology like there's so many things that we can develop um we are still we we still have great new potentials on uh, unfortunately most of the people don't know how much agriculture has developed in the last 100 years we are using genetically modified food which uh, is available all through the year we are using genetically modified seeds for rice for tomatoes for potatoes for everything and an agriculture student would be more than like smart enough or more than capable to help the country go especially in a country like us when we've been studying all through our lives, when when we were in school, and I think Rajji would agree to this as well, when we studied, we started saying Nepal is an agricultural country. We we have such a good uh, landscape for agriculture. All of our Tarai belt, most of our um, mountain belts are available for agriculture, and that's something that we can tap into. That's the potential that we can tap into. And absolutely, yes, it is a massive scope for everyone who wants to go there. Um, on the contrary, mining students at Curtin is the best in the world, but can you identify some scope for Nepali students? Um, yeah, mining, mining uh, engineering is, or mining students can have. Now, mining in Australia um, is very huge. 
And something that we are very proud of is we are number one in Australia for our mining courses, both our mining sciences and mining engineering. We are also number two in the whole world for our mining engineering and mining sciences courses. So you'll see that our mining school, which was back, which was established back in 1903, uh, Western Australia School of Mines provides students not only the direct education about mines and how to work in mines, but we also provide students an access to the industry, live projects, so they can talk to those people, make mentors, and tomorrow when they graduate, they have an access to them directly. Unlike any other university in Australia, our students enjoy that aspect. And as I said, um, our mining courses are taught in Calgary, which means the student can also get access to the two years of post-study work, right? On, on, uh, sorry, the two extra year of post-study work, right? On top of their two regular years. So it's always a plus thing for the student to do that. The students can always come back to Nepal and do different things. Now they can work in different places like um, construction. They can work in the tunneling work that they normally do, um, the roadside tunneling where you need the blasting, uh, you need a specific knowledge of blasting and uh, different uh, different rock structures and everything. You can also work in different mines that uh, we have. We have we don't have big mines, but we have very very small mines that have never been tapped because we never have had that education available here in Nepal. So uh, even I think the closest information, closest study to mines that Nepali students get is either in geology or environmental science when they study here in Nepal. So, and a little bit of civil engineering, I'm sure. But when they do that, um, they have massive work even back in home. And we have had very good number of students going for this mining courses last, uh, sorry, uh, last year and this year also. <clears throat> so you see that the, the, uh, the, I think the charm or the interest in these courses have been increasing so far. Scholarship available for masters in plant molecular biology. Now we do not have a plant molecular biology specific. Uh, I would say you will have to go. I'll just pin this website. Um, right. So um, you will have to go to this website and then figure out what course you need. If you're looking for a plant based course, if you're looking for a animal based course, health science based course, whatever it is, you can always find all of these courses available in this link. I'll just uh, pin the link there. So just search your course and you'll find it. If you're looking for a master's degree, I'd recommend you look for a two years master's degree because that's what normally students um, uh, apply for. And when you apply for a two years master's degree, you get that post-study work right as well. And plus a two years master's degree will help you come back to Nepal and use that as equivalence. A lot of times uh, students might have an issue with equivalency when they come back with a less than two years of master's degree. Um, so yeah, that's something that you should definitely apply for. Um, again, as I said, my name is Surit Bhattrai. I'm the country representative for Curtin University. Curtin University is a university based out of Western Australia. And if you have any questions or concerns, please, please write them down. I'd be more than happy to help them out. So let me quickly jump into our courses and that are very famous in Nepal. So I've already spoken about our health sciences courses. Now, let me just quickly jump into um, our uh, science and engineering courses. From our science and engineering, uh, we have something called our, our Masters of Professional Engineering. Um, yes, Rajji, it has not been touched at all in our resourceful country. Um, we, from the studies that have been done, I think we have very few mines in our country, very, very few, but that's something that we could uh, absolutely tap. There, that's uh, there's there's a huge amount of potential that I think we should definitely tap and um, we should definitely look into it as well. Um, so as I was saying, uh, courses about our science and engineering. We have our bachelor's in engineering, which is a four years engineering degree. We have specializations anywhere from mechanical, mechatronic, electrical, uh, chemical, civil, and construction, computer engineer. Like you can just choose it and you can apply for those courses. We also have a bachelor's of science in um, IT and our ba sorry bachelor's of science in computing. And we also have a bachelor's of information technology. So any student who wants to apply for that, our bachelor's of computing has a specialization in cybersecurity. So if anyone is applying for that cybersecurity major or looking to apply for that cybersecurity major, then that's something that they can do. Um, we also have something called uh, a 
Masters of Professional Engineering. Our Masters of Professional Engineering is a two years Masters of Engineering, which is, again, uh, as I already said, we have specializations in mechanical, chemical, civil, you know, software engineering, and a few other uh, specializations that the students can apply for. Um, the only thing that uh, the students need to remember is our, our engine requirement. You just need to have an engineering degree and you need to have a six overall, each band six to apply. Um, for We also have something that's very interesting <clears throat> and that's normally not available to other, uh, not available in most of the different universities. We have what's called a Masters of Predictive Analytics. Masters of Predictive Analytics at Curtin University is one of its best kind. Uh, the Masters of uh, Predictive Analytics is for those students who uh, has, who shows um, a very good, um, I think, traction towards numbers and data science. So our Masters of Predictive Analytics is a combination degree between um, business analytics and data science. So it's a combination. So not just, will you, know, uh, will you not just be um, compiling the degree uh, combination of, uh, sorry, uh, compile the degree and do a little bit of manipulation of data, but you'll also learn how to project the future patterns as well. And that's where this whole um, idea of prediction of uh, data comes into play. So that's something pretty interesting. And we've been getting very good number of students from Nepal as well for that course. Uh, okay, Santosh Kanalji, how Curtin can support for the student after completion of their study? Okay, normally Curtin University has very good industry connections. So um, we have all of our students have a very, very good uh, satisfaction ratio when they graduate. Uh, that is provided by QS World Ranking. Um, so the students normally we we do not send them out to get jobs. So that is that is not the concept that. Uh, you know, most of the Australian universities follow, but we do provide them with an access to all of our partners. So if they've worked well, if they've done some research, if they've done some project with those partners, then it makes sense. It is very easy for them to go there and um, work. Uh, so yeah, essentially like, and plus another good thing is because of our ranking and because we are the largest university in Western Australia, highly regarded within the university as well. Fun, uh, fun fact, all the students, all the local students who want to study in Western Australia, who want to study higher education in Western Australia, 51% of those students end up choosing Curtin University. The rest, 49% of those students end up choosing other, sorry, other universities. So we are very highly ranked even for our local students. So you can imagine if the students did not see their career growth, if the students did not see their, uh, you know, prospects later after the graduation, like years and years down the line, they would not have done that. Um, Purnima Ji asks, will Curtin hold an orientation for the students studying online? Absolutely, yes, there will be an orientation. We will teach them how to do it. We will provide them access. And Curtin University staff will always be in touch with them if they need anything. Um, we are just on the verge of uh, staying in touch with all of our Nepalese students at this point. We are, we are starting our program from this week. So all of our Nepalese students who are currently studying at Curtin University, we are going to stay in touch with them and we're trying to ask them if they're okay, if they need any help, if there's an issue that they're facing so that we can help them at the best we can. So we are definitely looking into that and we will definitely do that for our future students as well. Will the tuition fee be different for online study? As of right now, unfortunately, no, the tuition fee will stay the same because our resources are give or take almost the same. Our professors will be the same and our materials will be the same. So at the point, no, I don't see anything changing right now. But if there is, uh, we will be the first one to let our agent network and our student networks know that there might be a change. We are looking into it. We are making sure that there are some changes for our students who are going to start their classes soon uh, so that it's easy for them as well. But for now, no. For technical programs like engineering and health sciences, how will students get practical experience? Okay, so uh, if you follow the news, as I said, you'll see that the uh, amongst the countries who, are, who have been affected, like that's all of the world right now, but amongst the countries who have been affected, by this virus, you'll see that Australia and New Zealand, a few, uh, you know, these Australasia countries have been very proactive in controlling it and making sure that it's it's very well dealt with. Um, from the projection that a few uh, health uh, scientists have provided and a few business pro projections and economic projections, we'll see that by very soon, everything should be back to 
normal. Now, when I say normal, this will be the new normal. This won't be like as normal as previous, but this would be a new normal and they would everything would start working. That's when all of their practical courses or all of their practical um, components would be pushed. For anyone who's starting recently, their practical components will only start from the about their second semester or third semester. So they don't need to worry about that. If they have a practical component, the professors will give them assignments, will give them alternative assignments and assessments in order to help them throughout this process. <laughs> uh, so Abby asks, why should we go for Curtin University besides other university? Well, um, I'll give you some reasons to do that. One, we are the largest university in Western Australia, not just with our student number, that is 56,000, but also with um, our resources. We are a pretty big university. You can just go to Google Maps and then check Curtin University Bentley campus and you'll see the whole area for yourself. It is a huge university. Second, uh, which means a lot. now. Huge university also means big resources for our students. We have amazing computer labs, amazing finance lab, amazing science labs, chemistry labs, pharmacy labs. Like almost every faculty has a lab for themselves. So it's an amazing opportunity for students to work. Second is our partnerships with different companies. We have uh, partnerships with companies like Cisco, which is a great tech giant, Woodside, which is a great petroleum and fossil fuel engineering giant, and NASA as well. So a few of our students will be selected every year to do a different project with them. Whichever the course matches, they can do projects with them. So tomorrow when they graduate, they can graduate and the CV says they have done some projects with NASA or Cisco or Woodside. Now, this is always a good thing, well, especially considering that these are just university students and a ranking top 230 in the whole world, top 1% in the whole world. We are ranked very well for our courses we've been increasing increasing last year we were at two i think 260 uh 260 250 and now we've bumped into 230 so we're just moving every year and the student rea will realize that the degree the value that the degree holds from Curtin university is of huge huge um uh, implications in the future uh, another thing is our population so our population of students is very well uh, differentiated we are not as i said we are not just an international university and we're not just a local university we have international students as well as local students so when you go to australia one of the things that i really don't like I've, I've been working in this industry for the last 10 years and one of the things that i really really don't like is when students write there in their sop that um i'm going to australia for international exposure or to learn what it is like in australia but when they go to australia they study in a university campus or in a university where there's only international students you're not going to get international exposure when you sit down with the other South Asian students. You need the local concept. If you are to learn how they work in Australia, how they use that degree, how they've, how they've developed so far in Australia, you need to talk to local students. You need to talk to local people. For that, that local exposure is required. That's what Curtin University will provide as well. So I think just a few of these things, and most of our courses are ranked pretty high, top 100 in the whole world. Um, so any student who's looking to uh, go through that should be pretty okay for them. Um, Razi asked, any advices for the students and parents from the university side? Um, for those students who are already there, um, well, Please don't worry. It's it it is a bad thing. Just like uh, it's it's happened to everyone, and ev everyone in every country is just going to pass. This is going to pass pretty soon. Um, just stay there, hold on, hang on. Uh, it should be pretty easy. If you are a student and if you are having hardships, please contact the university already. If you are already there in Perth, and if you have hardships, please contact us. We'll try to help you as much as we can. Um, for those students who are looking to study abroad, do not be um, do not be sad about it. Do not be um, upset that you know the this thing will harm your uh, process it is not going to do anything to your process it is going to go off in in a part in, in as quickly um, as possible and with that uh, your dream of studying internationally getting that international education is also going to be there for parents I'd like to uh, remind if your child is still at home right now and if your uh, if students are still at home and they don't know what to do, I'd like to re remind them to go ahead and do courses online. You have free courses available everywhere on the internet. Most of the course providers these days are giving either incentives or making it free for the students to do classes. So do that. Keep yourselves occupied. Make, uh, make sure that you do something. 
you know, there's a word called side hustle. Always do that side hustle so that you don't feel bored and you don't feel um, that you've never you you you're staying idle. So make sure that you use make the most of your time so that you feel creative as well. Um, right. So Purnimaji asks, what skills should you think the students should have apart from the academic skills before heading abroad? Um, pretty good question. I would I would always say like, I think it's still very um not common in nepal to have <clears throat> a good computer skill um now when i say a good computer skills i'm not just saying um opening up a computer using facebook or you know um opening up a computer uh, using youtube i mean open up your computer learn the basics learn excel learn word because you need that those things learn powerpoint because powerpoint presentations are going to be your friends if you are if you are anywhere in business sector uh, if you are any student, you'll need to write down different uh, proposals and different assignments on Word. So you need to be um, familiar with different things. And you think that it's just typing and saving. No, there's so many things to it. So many different things that you need to learn in Word and PowerPoint and in Excel. So work on that. Get different skills. Um, if you are here and if everything goes back to normal, I would also say learn driving skills because it's always important learn uh, a fair bit of um if you, if you are looking to do part-time job there maybe you could enhance your skills by doing barista training courses or anything as such um whichever is going to help you but for me i would say personally for a student you will need your basic computer skills if you don't even have basic computer skills it's going to be very very tough for you and while at it even if you've gotten like a 6.5 in your ielts make sure you listen to more australian if you're looking to go to australia start watching australian australian videos on youtube or wherever you can so that you get used to that accent australian accent is one of the thickest accents that you'll find so you need to get used to it because i we don't want you to land in australia um, in perth or in any other city and you realize that oh i don't understand half of the things that these guys are saying you need to be get your yourself used to uh listening to that accent uh your message to the students who are stuck here even after the visa grants well i'd, I'd recommend there are two ways for you you can always ask for a deferral if you don't want to start your course online but if you want to start your course online i'd recommend you do that uh, start it and go ahead and take start taking classes uh for <clears throat> if you want to defer don't worry about it the university uh every university's refund policies are pretty strong and at this point um, the students are students will always be helped properly uh, because uh, it it is not something that it is not students' fault um, that something like this happened. So there's always good measures for this, and Australia has always been prepared when it comes to their international students. You'll be surprised how many regulations and rules there are for international students in a country like Australia. Uh, we, we they they have regulations for uh, if they've if the provider collapses, if something happens to the provider, if the students do not turn up, if the teachers do not turn up, if the student does not get the quality education, everything is available for them. So just be relaxed at this point. Just wait till this whole pandemic scene pans out and then you can proceed with uh, going to Australia and getting your classes done. Uh, and I think, um, are you in touch with the Nepalese students currently studying at Kearney? If yes, what's the experience like? Uh, we are planning on so i've spoken to a few students who are studying currently at Curtin, and though they are a little worried about uh, the scenario they are not they're not at all um in shambles they're they're, they're pretty they're doing pretty fine um if they are if some of them are working they are still some of them are still going uh, to their work they're still uh, continuing with their work uh, most of them are stay, staying at home and uh, taking this time to learn some new skills most of them are just trying to get to their classes most of the classes um even the english classes or any other classes are online so they they normally do uh, put that through um we are in process of contacting all of our international students and we should be done by this week and when we do if they if our international students have anything specific that um, uh, they have in mind we definitely put that into like a newsletter and then let uh, our agents know and our future students know but as of right now there's nothing wrong everyone is just happy at this point um so yeah i guess uh that's pretty much it from my side thank you so much you guys for tuning in and thank you so much uh, team professional for helping me out with this uh program we've did almost an hour worth of uh live video for you guys uh, again thank you so much my name is surit Batrai. i'm the country representative for Curtin university and uh, stay safe uh stay with your family stay indoors um, if you're in nepal 
uh, lockdown is pretty hard for everyone, but just keep yourselves occupied with anything, anything, and you should be able um, to be good throughout the time. Mental health is a really good issue, so you should definitely be uh, taking care of that as well. Thank you so much. I hope you guys have a great day ahead, and yeah, I wish you a happy Monday. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.